and this is a turnkey coaching and development solutions sponsored webinar. I am super excited that you guys are here. I want you to know that we appreciate your time and hope that we can really make this an interesting and um, progressive webinar about millennials taking over. Um, I am uh, pleased that uh, we uh, have an expert on the call with us, Annie Kirshenman. And um, Annie, uh, are you in charge of the presenter of uh, slides here? I am. Fantastic. So, so we're going to jump right in. And as you guys can see in GoToMeeting, if you guys have questions, one of the things that I really want to point out is that it's really important for us to answer any questions or uh, address any challenges that you specifically are hoping that this webinar will address. So please don't hesitate to let us know um, your feedback as we go or your questions as we go. So. Uh, one of the things that I want to start right out with is our learning objectives. What are we going to talk about today and why is it important? So uh, I was speaking with Annie and one of the most in interesting pieces about the generation of the millennials is this conversation around who are they, <laughs> what do they want, and what are their priorities. And in my experience in working, working with HR professionals on learning and development programs with Turnkey, um, many HR folks really have studied this conversation and they know who their millennial workforce uh, is. However, the larger percentage of them um, have uh, expressed a concern regarding the stereotypes, regarding the uh, differences inside the millennial generation themselves, as well as how to address their uh, priorities. And so we're going to start today by talking about who are the millennials, what do they want, what are their priorities, and what does the research say about that the, this 20-year span generation. Um, we're also going to talk today about the organizational challenges as well as the benefits related to your millennial workforce. And I am highly confident that much about what we talk about, you'll be saying, yep, we, I know that to be true. Hmm, I didn't realize everyone experienced that. And, oh, that's a specific generational issue that has to do with, say, for example, the differences between Gen X and baby boomers and millennials. So we're going to go into um, things to look for as well as how can companies work with them most effectively and strategies and tips for effective millennial workforce development. It, um, the same old training uh, programs and annual reviews, for example, are not very effective with our millennial workforce. And so companies that are uh, figuring this out are learning to adapt and use technology and real-time feedback and many other things that Annie is going to share with us today. So again, if you're just joining the call, we're just getting started. Uh, my name is Anissa Avon. And Turnkey Coaching Solutions is sponsoring the call. That's my company. We founded in 2004 with an intention of becoming a single point of contact enterprise learning and development solutions um, provider for our clients. We have uh, coaches and master trainers all over the country, and I've been um, working with Annie, who is our expert uh, on millennials and cross-generational intelligence. And so, Annie, um, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. We can get right into it because we have got a lot to cover today. Um, just real quickly, I want to say that Annie uh, has worked with, I don't know, a dozen or so of our clients, and she never fails to deliver results. They are uh, Annie, constantly impressed with your expertise as well as your ability to adapt your programs, whether it be innovations or in this case cross-generational influence, etc., um, to the needs of the culture. So would you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and, and how you came to this uh, level of expertise? Okay, well thank you so much for that, uh, Anissa. And welcome everyone uh, to this webinar, which is uh, a topic uh, near and dear to uh, my professional heart. Uh, and I am Annie Kirshenman. I'm a board certified coach with the specialty designation Executive Corporate Business and Leadership. I'm a corporate trainer and facilitator and also a business person, have been for more than 20 years now. 
Uh, however, the world of business is not where I started. I come from a background in the arts and creativity as well as innovation are a major part of my work today as a coach and facilitator. I'm also a former executive. I stepped down from my CEO role in 2005 and I just love sharing what I've learned, what works, um, and what's interesting to me as well as others. Uh, ergo, this webinar, uh, Generations in the Workplace, is uh, not only really interesting stuff, um, I believe understanding these dynamics is essential uh, to the success of any company or organization. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in, shall we? That'd be great. Okay. So uh, again, people on this uh, webinar probably are aware of this. This is just a general overview here of our generations in the workplace. Uh, and there are essentially four in the workplace today. You, you see them there. And while there are still some members of the traditional or so-called greatest generation in the workplace, um, like my dad, who's 82, 83 now and still working full time, uh, this is an exception. Uh, the most active generations in our workplace are, of course, the baby boomers. And while some of them are retiring, uh, a lot of them are choosing to stay in the workplace or rather than retiring or shifting uh, to another career. Uh, the literature has, has coined the term encore careers to describe this phenomenon with the boomers. Uh, our Gen Xers, or as Pew uh, Research has dubbed them, uh, the forgotten middle child. Uh, our Gen Xers are sandwiched between these two behemoth generations, the boomers and uh, our subject today, the millennials. Uh, they're a smaller, quieter, and unfortunately often overlooked generation. Our topic today, uh, the millennials, uh, the youngest of whom are just entering the workplace at around 21, 22. Um, and then our up and coming Gen Z, the oldest of whom are about 2021, 20, so just entering the, the workplace. Okay, so before we dig into uh, who are the millennials, uh, we have a poll for participants. Um, as an employer, what challenges have you experienced with your millennial employees? <laughs> always interesting to watch the the polls and you know we are for, forcing folks to select just one so I know that that's they're having to evaluate huh which one they're all true or they're not all true yeah. um, right now it looks like 46 percent are focusing on the unrealistic promotion and compensation expectations um, we've got 22 percent um, uh, addressing overly sensitive 18% uh, at poor work ethic and 8% at devaluing face-to-face -face communications and then 4% uh, are, are saying other. So um, I think that we can close that out in just a moment. It looks like we've still got a few folks that are taking a minute. Yep. I see uh, our unrealistic expectations of promotion and compensation is up at almost 50% now. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you everyone. I am going to close that out so we can move along. Uh, so yes, did it give you actually the poll results there? Or I can just read them to you. Or no, you have uh, access to read it as well, right? I'm, yes, I can see it. So we've got 48% at unrealistic uh, promotion and compensation, 18% at overly sensitive, 23 at poor work ethic, 8% um, devalue face-to-face -face com communications and 3% other. Uh, so is, do we have anything in the chat box? We don't have other? anything in the chat box, but those of you who did uh, select other, if you have something in mind, um, do write it in the chat box so that if we uh, do, are not already planning on addressing it in the webinar, we can work that in. Very so good. it's pretty interesting, though, that uh, the, the folks were 
uh, identified, and I think what this poll tells us is is the order of priority since they were only allowed to select one uh, and that first piece of unrealistic compensation expectations, which we also hear a lot of our clients talking about unrealistic career expectations, expecting promotions, um, ex uh, ex expecting special uh, allowances, expecting greater flexibility in their work schedule, um, those kind of pieces that are very unrealistic. Mm, indeed. Well, thank you everyone for that. I think you will see this echoed in um, our uh, literature uh, review. So let's pop right on into that. Um, this may be uh, uh, a review for some of you and um, hopefully there will be some information here that um, perhaps uh, will be new to everyone. Uh, this generation was named the Millennials because they started graduating from high school in the year 2000. And the population has now surpassed the Boomers as the largest living generation. Uh, in 2015, there were some 75 million. Uh, they're expected to peak in 2036 at around 81 million. And in 2050, they're projected to be about seven, 79 million strong. And you may be curious uh, why this generation population is growing. Uh, according to the literature, that is mainly due to immigration. And that's in the United States. And the information uh, and statistics that we'll be talking about today are mainly about the millennials in the US. Uh, however, this is uh, obviously a worldwide generation. And I think a lot, of, a lot if not all, of the hallmarks uh, will apply um, worldwide. So while the dates for this generation, as all generations, do vary a bit depending upon the source in the literature, uh, generally they were born between 1981 and 1997. They are also known as Echo Boomers, Gen Y, and Generation Y, W-H-Y. Uh, 60 Minutes reported that they're called the Echo Boomers because they are the genetic offspring and demographic echo of their parents, the baby boomers. The term refers to the generation's size relative to the boomer generation, um, as well as the significant increase in birth rates uh, between the 1980s and 90s. Uh, these millennials are tech savvy and multitaskers. You've probably noticed that. They're socially conscious and they seek meaning in their lives and in their work. You probably also notice that they're ambitious and highly self-confident. Uh, they like balance and flexibility. We'll be talking more about that in just a moment. Uh, when it comes to retirement, well, the millennials can't really imagine retiring. Um, they tend to be highly creative and innovative, and boy, do they move around a lot. Uh, the literature has coined this phrase, parallel careers for the millennial generation, um, because the average millennial is expected to have nine or more careers in her or his lifetime. Obviously, huge um, impact for our workplaces. And finally, the authors of Generation We say this, millennials do not see a world of limits, but rather one of possibilities in which anything can be accomplished with enough creativity and determination. Uh, this is also a mission-driven generation. Uh, they want to change the world for the better. Uh, they tend to be collaborative, so uh, ergo uh, they're sometimes called Gen We. Uh, they tend to be uh, free-thinking and progressive and politically active. And while they haven't necessarily rejected the corporate world, uh, they will seek other options, uh, such as starting their own companies if they can't find workplaces that accommodate their personal values. And values are very important to millennials. Now, both men and women are seeking the same type of workplace, and that's one where they can be their true selves. And what the literature says is that companies risk the loss of both women and men, uh, for example, by not allowing employees to accommodate personal and family values as a part of the way that they accomplish their work. And family and friends, very important to the millennials. 
uh, they like their parents. They like being with their parents and a whopping 22 million are still living with their parents and P.S. loving it. Uh, they also tend to be very close to their extended family. Uh, this tends to be a very open-minded and tolerant generation uh, and they tend to be pro-environment. So the author of three books, um, which we'll see in the next slide, this is Morley Winograd, uh, says, if you had to sum up the millennials in just one behavior, it's wanting to change the world for the better together. And this is perhaps a direct contrast to a popular view of the millennials as uh, selfish or self-centered. Um, in fact, in 2013, Time Magazine labeled them the me, me, me generation. And uh, that stereotype has stuck, uh, especially in the media. Uh, what's interesting uh, when millennials are surveyed is they tend to agree with this assessment. Uh, however, they say only up to a point uh, they feel that these labels are indiscriminate and may miss the mark as, of course, all stereotypes uh, suffer from that. You know, what I, what I find really interesting, and I imagine that you'll recall this as well, PricewaterhouseCoopers did that 2012 survey um, where they actually surveyed what is it that's most in, the most important factor in, to you in deciding to take a job. And, you know, it, it would seem that if they were really the me, me, me generation, it would, all, it would be about promotion and money, right? That would be the number one factor if it's all self-centered. But it wasn't. The number one influencer was the opportunity for personal development. And, mm. and so sometimes when I hear um, folks talking about the stereotypical millennial and they do not uh, include the fact that their passion for um, making a difference or their passion for personal development at, at the top of the list, it, it really concerns me that we have some confusing ideas. And, and in fact, in that same study, PwC found that the, the last reason, it's, it's still a factor, but it was only 21% said that money was the most important. And then if they dive a little bit deeper, part of that was because, well, they are, they have a massive burden of student loan debt to address. And so, of course, that's um, going to be included, as, as it should be. But I find it interesting, and, and I know you're going to get into this in a little bit, but I find it interesting that the whole stereotype of me, me, me is, is in my mind, completely um, juxtaposed to the surveys that say, why would you take a job? What matters to you? And, and what matters is that personal development piece. Mm. Yeah, thank you for, for adding that. It, it is, um, uh, it, there, there are contrasts in every generation if you study them, um, juxtapositions, if, if you will. Um, and, and, you know, to a certain extent, all of it applies. Uh, I think the challenge is, uh, you know, not to get stuck in any one stereotype, but really look at not only the whole package <laughs> that, um, in this case, our millennials bring to the table, um, but also look at, at individual differences, and um, and and that, you know, varies person to person and, and company to company. So, uh, okay. thank you for for adding that. Um, and yes, uh, development is really important um, to millennials. We'll, we'll be talking about that in uh, just a few moments. So he here are the, the three books uh, that uh, Winograd has uh, written. We'll be sending you a, a link with information on how you can get your hands on these resources following the webinar. That's if you want to take a deeper dive into understanding this generation, and I wouldn't be surprised if you do, uh, because everyone is curious, uh, including the millennials themselves. So this is a snapshot of uh, a cover story from the Christian Science Monitor Weekly magazine, um, one that was published last year, uh, where a couple of millennials take off on a Jack Kerouac type road trip to discover more about their generation. And this was across the United States. Along the way, they met and interviewed uh, their peers. And they came to five basic conclusions. I'm just going to quickly cover them for you here. Uh, they found that conventional milestones, such as getting a college degree, starting a family, home ownership, uh, these remain important to millennials. However, they are delaying uh, a lot of those choices. 
Uh, number two, their youthful optimism is tempered by the practicality of a generation that has come of age confronting terrorism, economic recession, and the relentless advance of technology. Number three, they understand that the established ways of doing things are not always the best. That sometimes working hard and following the rules do not guarantee success. So number four, uh, they are looking for other paths to get where they're going and accomplish their goals. And number five, beneath it all run two currents of idealism. Uh, first, they view independence and self-determination as the pinnacles of success, and they believe this success should be shared with fellow Americans and with the world. Okay, so we're going to uh, shift gears here in just a moment in terms of looking at millennials in the workplace. And before we go there, we have another uh, question for participants. Uh, how are the millennials improving your workplace? Uh, what have you noticed? I think this is a, a really, while we're waiting for folks to reply, you know, Annie, in your research and study, what have you discovered has been the positive influence with some of the uh, companies that you've uh, looked at and done your research on? What are the things that are how are they impacting it and can you give us some specific examples inside organizations? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good question and, and, and there are a lot of answers to that. Uh, I think one of the things that employers are noticing is that um, the, the bump in terms of the ability to not only understand but utilize technology to forward uh, the organization or the company's goals has been uh, an incredible resource. Uh, the fact that this is a forward-thinking, visionary, if I can use that word, type of generation is, is bringing new, um, uh, new life into, into companies, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. Companies are getting an opportunity to um, imagine uh, a future that they might not have 10 years ago. Um, so uh, there, you know, there's this certainly is an extremely, extremely talented generation, and one that benefits um, the the companies where they are employed, uh, for sure. Um, and I see from our survey here uh, that most people is that. Are you showing the poll results yes. now? Yes. Okay, super. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 72% have um, noticed that tech savvy thing. So that's again right in line with um, what what my clients point to. 11% um, uh, innovative, uh, attendant to that. 9% resourceful and 7% um, collaborative. Uh, and we have 2% other. Um, and is is there anything in the chat box to define? Not yet. Not, not yet. Okay. Definitely, folks, if you uh, if you notice other ways in which your millennials are improving your workplace, we'd love to share that with uh, others. Um, mm. this, this piece about resourceful um, is seems to be a strength uh, in their generation. I know that um, uh, my son's a junior at Texas A and M, and his truck broke down, and his his first call was not to my husband uh, to say, hey, I'm stranded on the side of the road. It was to video Google, what do I do when? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the second call, of course, was to us, but the first <laughs> one was, how do I solve this? And, and I, I don't think that that can go understated. I know that in um, my generation, some of us w were born to be resourceful and figured it out, and others were born, not born, but raised to follow the rules. You know, you don't color outside the lines. These are the rules. You do what you're told. Here's the instructions, right? And so I, mm -hmm. I have peers um, that are not resourceful, that still don't know how to, you know, save a, a Word file as a PDF if it wasn't, you know, blatantly explained. And, and I think that's something that I find that our clients are, if they're able to uh, strengthen that, uh, will mm -hmm. find that. Mm -hmm it's pretty significant. What has been your experience? Absolutely. Um, it, it's, I, I'm, a, I'm in the boomer generation and it, it, it blows my mind what, <laughs> what millennials can do with technology. It just seems like a blur to, you know, from my point of view. Um, but I agree. 
their their access to and ability to navigate technology and use it resourcefully um, as well as creatively is quite stunning. Yeah. So very good. So um, let me just get. Yeah, this next. next one I'm very excited about because it's really about the differences of what do the millennials want versus what do the employers want and, and what I understand you're about to share with us now is what employers want from the millennials that they believe they're not currently getting. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Uh, these are some snapshots from the literature, um, and you know, even though this is a very talented generation, there's plenty of frustration on the part of employers. Uh, so this is at least a partial list of what employers want that they're not necessarily getting from millennials. It's not again across the board they're not getting it, but it, the, as a general statement when when employers were surveyed in in the literature, these are the kinds of things that came up um, for them. And I think participants will uh, will recognize um, some of these uh, frustrations based on that first poll. So let's go ahead and go over those. Um, there you have right at the top the um, uh, realistic compensation expectations uh, is something that uh, employers are not necessarily getting from the millennials. So this generation tends to have more unrealistic uh, expectations compared to other generations. Uh, these Gen Y workers tend to expect that everything happens quickly, leading them to believe that promotions and uh, successful growth in a company happen at a much faster rate than reality. Um, also, uh, employers surveyed are pointing to this good work ethic thing. Um, the, this expectation that millennials have that things happen quickly can also lead them to think that their career success isn't necessarily dependent on their hard work or dedication to their job. So an improved work ethic is definitely something that employers are seeking. Uh, going the extra mile. Uh, so one manager interviewed said this, and, and I quote, Millennials seem to be unaware that their responsibilities go beyond the basic job description. An employee's job is to make their manager's life easier, uh, meaning they're expected to do more than what they were hired to do, end of the quote. So there's a bit of a disconnect there in terms of expectations. Uh, improved communication skills. Uh, so again, employers surveyed uh, find that both written and verbal uh, communication skills are lacking. They find that millennials tend to have poor writing skills. This is probably due to their technological upbringing and things like texting, which of course is an abbreviated form of communication. Um, and employers resoundingly implore, gosh darn it, could you learn how to pick up the phone and have a conversation every once in a while? Um, <laughs> there's a, uh, there seem, what seems to be going on here, uh, according to the literature, is that when millennials are told to communicate with the client, so manager, the boss says, please communicate to the client, uh, millennials uh, translate this to mean contact the client in the most efficient manner possible and for them that means uh, a text or an email. Uh, employers say that uh, millennials don't seem to understand the distinction that texting is different than communicating. Employers are finding that this means that their verbal communication skills are diminished um, they're actually in conversation less with each other um, and their communication skills are highly abbreviated and perfunctory. So lots of room for improvement there. Uh, commitment to the company. As we've seen, millennials like to move around and employers are very wary of those projected nine plus careers. Yes. Um, three out of four employers uh, said that millennial candidates do not know how to dress for interviews. They show up much too casually. Uh, the next bullet point, be willing to make mistakes and learn. Uh, surprisingly enough, millennials tend to be risk or failure averse. Um, in a Huffington Post blog, uh, Laura Beckor writes, and again I quote, Millennials have been called by some the most cosseted generation in history. Raised by helicopter parents for whom the phrase self-esteem was more important than discipline or hard work, often. 
Uh, millennials were told from birth that they, like Bank of America, were simply too big to fail. So is it any surprise that so many of them are risk averse uh, where they might be faced with such an alien notion as failure? And that's the end of the quote. Now, um, uh, Anissa, I don't like to fail. I'm, I'm assuming no. you don't care for it much either. No, my yeah. children didn't get the belt for failure. I certainly did. So, <laughs> you know, there is there is no shortage of a need for success in, in any of the generations. On that note, what what have you discovered, or do you have any um, examples of organizations who are addressing that? If it really is a systemic issue, um, mm -hmm. because organizations know their employees must have a, a willingness to fail, a willingness to receive feedback. I think I shared with you last week we had an employee um, that quit after being really fantastic for, I don't know, a couple of months, but he, he bumped him into something he wasn't very good at, so we started giving him feedback, and in his inability to handle the feedback, within two hours, he was so stressed out by the feedback that that was it. I, I have to yeah. go. I can't handle this. This is a toxic work environment. Wow. I'm yeah. So the yeah. whole idea <laughs> that I engaged in a toxic work environment blew me away, but I will yeah. say that there are steps and methodologies to improve a workforce's ability to groom their employees to be able to manage stress or manage feedback. What has been your experience with successful organizations? Absolutely. Well, and, and I, I'm guessing that uh, a, a, at least a few of um, our participants on the webinar today can resonate with what you're sharing in terms of your experience. And, and yes, it's true. No one really likes to fail. It's an uncomfortable uh, it's an uncomfortable place to be. It does seem to be showing up as much more profound for um, millennials than um, previous generations. So um, I, what can companies do? Well, ag again, there's no one size fits all answer to this, um, but certainly capacity building in this area, in intentional capacity building is something that a lot of companies are doing. Um, you know, for example, uh, fostering a team culture uh, or a corporate culture where um, making mistakes is expected and um, that, that you have a certain process for evaluating um, mistakes that, again, is, is trained and, and intentional um, so that um, it, millennials in particular, but all employees, um, can get more comfortable um, with that. So. And that's just one example, you know, creating this, this culture of expectation that, that you're going to make mistakes, you're a human being, um, and then, you know, what do you, how do you evaluate that, what do you, what do you learn from that. Feedback, we're, we're going to be talking more about that in, in just a moment, that's a really sticky wicket with um, millennials, uh, so I'm going to just put that in the parking lot for uh, a moment. Okay, uh, rounding out this slide, uh, an increase in organizational skills. As we've seen, millennials tend to be multitaskers, um, and that does seem to be impacting their ability to manage and prioritize their time, so they get all their work done in a timely and cohesive manner, which is, of course, very important to employers. And finally, professionalism. Employers want millennials to learn and respect the company culture and then behave professionally accordingly. So on the flip side, we're going to go over now to what millennials want. Um, we've seen this is a very talented generation and a terrific asset in the workplace. Um, so what do they want? And again, this is at least a partial list of what millennials want that they are not necessarily getting uh, from their employers. So first of all, clear, specific instructions on how to do the job. Uh, feedback, okay, so we've, we've touched on this, and, and it's, it, this is a, one of those kind of dichotomy areas. So, you know, Anissa, the unfortunate situation that you described with, with your uh, team member is common um, among um, employers, unfortunately. Um, and this is perhaps a direct contrast to the fact that they really want feedback, um, and they like it to be easy, and they like it to be immediate, and maybe here's the rub, they also like it to be positive. Um, so, you, you know, when an employer has constructive uh, criticism, 
uh, to provide to millennials, it becomes um, a little bit more of an art on on the side of the uh, the manager or the employer's side, uh, and and also a, an issue for capacity building in in terms of our millennials. That you know, <laughs> again, this idea that you, you, it's okay to make mistakes. We expect you're going to be making mistakes, and and here's how we proceed um, when um, there's been a misstep. I think what you're saying there is really important, that it is a two-pronged approach. Um, I do see um, some of our clients who want um, to provide instructions and training and development for the managers to be better uh, engaged at positive uh, performance management, um, but it's from what I've seen, it's equally important to cultivate a culture where the millennials are open to the feedback and they know that uh, there's going to be positive feedback and there's going to be negative and if I want to achieve my goals within the organization then I have to also be open to my blind spots in the areas where I have um, competency development and, and it's not just a lopsided we need to train our managers but we also need to develop a mindset of feedback and performance management within um, the millennial workforce would you agree absolutely this, these are things like emotional intelligence development and and um, you know lowering stress levels around uh, you know how, how we receive feedback and there's some great resources um, for that I'm sure m many of our participants on the call are aware of, of those uh, and and so yeah it is absolutely two-pronged and something that um, companies I think in order to be successful with this generation are going to have to develop some strategies for uh, uh, for feedback mechanisms that are perhaps different um, than what they've done in the past yes yeah so uh, the Millennials also want challenges remember they're multitaskers so go out of your way to give them appropriate challenges that, that utilize um, this skill um, they're looking for companies with a social consciousness and a vision uh, a workplace and employer that shares their values uh, an employer with a vision for a positive impact and uh, they tend to want to work for companies that put people before profit uh, they treasure a creative atmosphere, uh, they like innovation, and they are much less willing uh, than other generations to endure unpleasant conditions on the job in order to achieve career success. They want flexibility in scheduling um, and work-life balance is extremely important to them. Uh, as an example, uh, in, in the literature, in surveys, uh, millennial men are questioning uh, with uh, renewed uh, emphasis, I could say, uh, the traditional male career trajectory. More millennial fathers say that the ideal career would allow them to take time off to be with their children uh, before re-entering the workplace. This is just an example. Self-improvement. Uh, training, very important uh, to our millennials. Um, they are craving active social lives and group activities. We're going to be talking more about that in just a moment. And they, of course, uh, are wanting advancement. So companies that provide multiple routes and time frames to leadership will be more likely to retain their talented millennials and we're going to be giving you some examples of that in uh, just a moment. So some tips for employers and these are from a Bentley University study on millennials in the workplace. We'll be sharing that resource with you in just a moment. So I'm going to go through these uh, quite quickly and then we're going to talk about them just a little bit in the next slide. Um, so let them know that their work matters to you um, as an employer, as the boss, um, and also why it matters. That would be a, a, a welcome uh, from uh, the millennials. Uh, provide flexible work arrangements for both men and women to spend more time with their families. Um, offer parental leave in a way that both parents feel their jobs are secure. Uh, take an interest in the individual's career aspirations by hiring and then supporting or sponsoring for career success. And again, I'm going to give uh, some, uh, I'm going to elaborate on that in just a moment. 
Uh, next bullet point, create a work family that engenders loyalty to the company and create multiple paths and time frames for them to advance. Uh, and as, as Anissa, as you and I have been talking about this, of course, the big question is, okay, well, how do we do this? <laughs> and, um, of course, there's no one answer to that. There's many individual as well as company culture dynamics to take into account. And post-webinar, we're going to be sending you a couple of links. And um, the first one, I, I should say, we're going to be sending you a lot of information post-webinar, but these particular links um, address this question of how. How do we do that? And the first one is from a post in uh, Entrepreneur called uh, Methods for Building Employee Loyalty. And uh, to, to just quickly do it, because I see we're, um, time is marching on here, uh, for those highlights. Um, the first suggestion is invest more time in the hiring process with an eye towards uh, person organization fit in areas such as style and values. And of course, the article elaborates on that. Uh, second uh, tip is make your employees more marketable. So this, this is suggesting that you actually invest more in your employees um, instead of worrying that they will leave. One of the quotes from the article is, uh, the more employees feel they can leave, the more likely they are to stay. Yes. Yeah. I, I have an interesting comment um, that I've just now seen. Brooke uh, Ledwig, thanks for writing. She said, my millennial doesn't think it's important to wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> And I've also, <laughs> right? I've also seen employers have to deal with, um, I have a client who said, uh, their uh, employee said, um, can my mom call you about my upcoming vacation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see those or, close family ties, yes. yes. <laughs> or, or will I get a heads up before you drug test? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> So, you know, you're in the strategies. There are some things that I think that the research is going to show that there are tried and true strategies, and we will still be surprised by questions like, mm, is it okay if my mom calls you to negotiate my benefits package? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, <laughs> these certainly are challenges for employers, I must say. <laughs> Oh, glory be. Okay, so um, a couple more things from this article. Uh, allow this many paths to promotion thing. And, and here's an example. So many computer programmers uh, want to move up without shifting into management. So if you're a, a tech company, one way you could approach this is to give them a choice between a technical career path or a managerial one. And finally, empower excuse me, employees to make choices. Um, you can inspire loyalty by giving employees a sense of freedom and control. Uh, for example, being able to work from home when that's needed. And, and the article will give you uh, many more suggestions to consider. The second link in this area is another entrepreneur post uh, called 10 Examples of Companies with Fantastic Cultures. And so you can read how um, some companies, or these 10 companies anyway, have approached it. And, and Anissa, I believe you wanted to highlight one of those companies. That well, helps? you know, I think that um, one of the questions that has come in kind of addresses this. Um, uh, Erwin actually wrote, "Will are the millennials will leave if their needs are not met?" And so, if, if you have an example um, from that article you're talking about regarding, it, it is with our clients that we've been working with. We, when we go about designing a employee development strategy, whether it's for cross generational intelligence, which is something that's very very important, I think that. Um, Alan Duncan is on the call, and, and he he had said asked the question, "Do we baby boomers only have ourselves to blame for this list of issues?" Right? We strive yeah. to adapt to millennials through webinars and training, but have we failed to set expectations of millennials that they should also strive to adapt to us? And I have yet to be invited to a training on how to understand and adapt to boomers, for example, mm -hmm. boss and customers. So, when you say, "Do we have examples of that?" I'd love to hear the from one of your experiences, but we also 
I have a client here um, in, in our home base is in Houston and and this client has um, had a culture of 40 years of the company's existence and up until the last mm, five or six has had minimal turnover we're talking you know 10 10 percent or less I mean really unheard of and now as the millennial workforce is entering they it's just shot through the roof and so part of their strategy is very specific career development from the top down we started at the front line with um, the ABC's of of effective communication then we went to the front Frontline supervisors, and we've done um, uh, interpersonal effectiveness assessments using, for example, DISC. Um, and now we've, we're all the way at the top, and we've done um, uh, communicating with vision and purpose, and as well as strategic planning that's involved all the generations, um, even including those that have been with the company for 40 years and those who have just started. So one of the most effective pieces is a theme over a period of three to four years of being very, very strategic about the employee development, making sure that there's a singular model that addresses both the baby boomer needs, the Gen X needs, as well as the their current millennial workforce, and being progressive in knowing that we will, in the next 10 years, also have Gen uh, it's Gen Z, right? That will enter. Yeah. It isn't even ten years. They're they're entering the workplace now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it's a whole different uh, level of whole, whole uh, different ball game. Yeah, you got a whole different ball game. So the point yeah. being is being strategic across the training and not just once and done and not just um, uh, throwing a model out at their managers and saying you guys got to give give your millennials more feedback more often. They also have to be taught what that means in regards to efficiency versus effectiveness because that's a, a real gap in in the capacity development as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, it, 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 I think the, the word is strategic. I mean, we're going to sum it up. It's, it's companies are going to be called to be more strategic about this. Um, and we'll be um, talking more about that in just a moment in terms of the impact. Um, and uh, looking at the time, I'm going to go ahead and move us on to our next poll. So we've heard so far that millennials are changing things up in the workplace, but what do you guys think? To what extent um, is this creating change? And you've got your choices there. Profoundly a lot, average, some, and not much. Well, interestingly enough, as I'm watching the poll go, 0% are saying not much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would think uh, thus far it's either um, a lot and profoundly that are getting the most attention here. Okay. I see that, yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you all for that. Yep, it is 17% profound, 53% a lot. Yes, 16% uh, profound. Okay. Well, according to... Bentley University study, if I can get my, here we go, if you said profound, um, you are the winner uh, according to this Bentley University study. Uh, the millennials, they say, will create an impact by sheer volume. Um, and as we've seen, uh, they talk about uh, the millennial generation exhibiting different sets of professional values. Um, it, they have, they're motivated by very different priorities and to succeed in the future employers are going to need to know more about this shift and its implications. Uh, again, we're going to be sending you a link so you can get your hands on this study and look at it in more detail. Um, this Generation We I alluded to, it's a free ebook. Um, we're going to be sending you the link for that also. And their conclusion is this, Generation We, the Millennials, has arrived. They have emerged as a powerful political and social force. Their huge numbers and progressive attitudes are already changing America and the world. So the impact of all of this, um, based on what you've learned today and what you already knew about the Millennials, and what can you imagine uh, the impact is going to be on our workplaces? You want to go ahead and just uh, type a few of your thoughts into the chat. Um, we'll read a few of those out. 
And then we'll go to a couple of slides on what the literature is saying about the potential impact. Getting any thoughts there, Anissa? There we go. Sorry, I was on mute there for a second. Um, while we're waiting for folks to um, add their answer to what's the impact that you're seeing, uh, one of the things that I find interesting um, in both a strength and a weakness is the tech savvy and tech dependent. Mm. Um, and and the tech savvy part lends itself to the resourcefulness, um, the ability to work from home uh, if they can cultivate the work ethic, um, the ability to push uh, efficiency in systems and processes and particularly in high-tech industries um, uh, and the innovation piece. I also see um, organizations are having to make new rules in regards to Facebook time and <laughs> cell phone time and and the tech dependency um, of, of and this is of course the Millennials who are attached uh, to I mean their phone is, is an additional uh, appendix now <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> right? um, yeah. But at the same time, I see our other generations who are equally um, addicted to our cell phones and text messaging and emails in the middle of the night, etc. And so I see uh, some of my clients are having to um, do make some progressive uh, rules and boundaries in regards to when we're having a meeting, all cell phones are off or uh, you close your laptop at, when we're in the middle of a discussion. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah these sure. are, these are things we couldn't have imagined a few years ago. <laughs> and yeah, they're, they're, you're, you're right. Most, well, I'm just going to go ahead and say all companies that I work with are having to um, uh, create rules and boundaries such as the ones you're suggesting. So we've got Benita Mackey says leadership styles will need to change. I think mm. that's okay. an understatement, isn't it? Um, okay. Steven says more importance for companies to communicate vision and environmental footprint and social connections and revisit as things change. I think uh, you were excellent earlier, Annie, how important it is that the work that they do um, be socially uh, conscious, it, be environmentally. It has, to, it has to have meaning, and, and these are two areas where it is are really important to them, yes. Uh, Erwin says the current older generation of workforce employees will have a lot of adjustments to make. They're used to thinking <laughs> about new employees. Um, we'll have to adjust. They'll have yep. to adjust to the, to the styles of the millennials. Absolutely. And that is a training and coaching moment. I am not seeing a lot of the older generation uh, in our clients that we're working with and, and addressing this specifically, um, mm -hmm. having the natural ability to adapt to the younger workforce. I am seeing a lot of conflict that's unnecessary because of the lack of flexibility. Agreed. Because of the misunderstandings, yes. I, I think a lot, of, a lot of companies are experiencing that. Uh, Laura Getty wrote, um, recruiting will be more a more important function in HR. Workforce planning will also be vital. Mm -hmm. Very good points. Um, Scott, uh, needs for there's a need for organizations to find ways to bridge the needs of millennials with the realities of working in a corporate environment. So true. Excellent. Uh, Eric Martinez wrote, the cell phones uh, uh, are the new cigarette breaks. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is so, so true. <laughs> uh, Raphael uh, has written, there will be more social con socially conscious organizations with a balance between community and, and, and investor concerns. I think we're definitely seeing that with the advent of B Corps, where founders are writing in to the bylaws of the organization, their social and environmental um, consciousness values. Mm, absolutely. Um, Great stuff. Uh, Alejandro uh, has written, different generations working together will make us better prepared to respond to changing markets, understanding that diversity and change are the norm. Absolutely. And that's that's one of the benefits of, of strategically focusing on this is you get that 
you get the input from all the generations, which is brilliant and, and so, so valuable to yes. in the company or organization. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Mark has written serious attention to global warming mm. uh, and the importance there. Uh, Cheryl has written more career-driven opportunities, flexible work schedules, questioning how things have been done in the past. Uh, that doesn't always go over well, but yes, the millennials are not afraid to say, why are we doing it like this? Generation Y, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they'll push, it, they'll push it, those sacred cows, yes. <laughs> are you the expert at this? Because I'm not thinking this is the best way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Marnita has written, our company is a technology company and we feel we need all types of generations. However, I feel if we don't make some necessary changes, we have the, let's see, we have the potential to lose the millennials and guess what? They are the future. That's true. It's really true. Good stuff. And well, one, so it should be one yep. more. Yeah, okay. just one more. Provide training for the millennials on how to work successfully in a Gen X boomer run environment. Yep. Mm hmm Yes, well, and also, as we saw from the statistics, um, we're going to need to be recognizing that the millennials are now the, the largest generation in our workforce. So um, th this, this idea of cross-generational um, uh, understanding and compassion, if you will, is going to become increasingly uh, important. So I see we're um, bumping up against our time here, so let's just quickly cover a few thoughts from the literature. Uh, change, of course, we've, we've been hearing it throughout the webinar, uh, building loyalty, creating a stronger sense of purpose, um, and this is a really, really important one to, to consider. Um, the Deloitte Millennial Survey of 2016 says that an astonishing two-thirds of millennials surveyed express a desire to leave their current organizations by the year 2020. And that's not very far away. So this is becoming really, really important. Uh, the Forbes magazine says, if and when they do, millennials are likely to become social entrepreneurs. Again, that focus on making a difference in their communities and the world. Um, attendant to that, we're likely to see a rise in social injustice issues um, and uh, new interest or energy uh, in, the, in politics, interest in an energy for. As we've been talking about generational issues, increasingly important uh, as more boomers are remaining, the Gen Xers are full in, and millennials are growing in numbers. Uh, it's going to be very important for companies to be strategic about this. Uh, according to author and researcher Neil Howe, marketing approaches uh, to this generation are going to need to include parents, extended family, and peers, as well as that all-important focus on purpose and meaning. Uh, success in marketing, both internal and external, of course, is important. Um, the Ivy Investment Management Company predicts millennials will shortly have more earning power than the boomers. And then, of course, we talked about this shifting priorities. Uh, millennials are uh, delaying uh, milestones such as um, buying homes and starting families. So we have one more quick poll here. It's our snapshot of the millennials. Um, and as you've seen, some type of strategy for addressing this generation is important, so we're curious. Um, what you guys have been doing. And we've given you some choices there. If you've had another idea uh, in your company, please go ahead and type that into the chat box and um, we'll be able to uh, share that with everyone. Uh, one of the, uh, having uh, helped some clients develop different levels of training and development, um, and when I was adding pieces to this poll and go to meeting only allows us to include five options. Um, there are some things that I am noticing that are pretty progressive with some of the more conscious and aware and strategic organizations. Um, coaching and mentoring, both external, but equally as important is our mentor um, shared knowledge or knowledge transfer, formal knowledge transfer programs. Um, between the Succession generation development and, and that sort of thing. You betcha. Yeah. Um, the business simulations. Uh, one of the 
the complaints that we see most often are that the millennial and even some of the Gen Xers, Xers uh, don't have this level of business acumen that's required for um, their succession plan, for example, to work. And so providing employees with uh, business simulations, uh, even an AKA Shark Tank uh, project that ends in a mock investor panel to build acumen that perhaps were missed in their um, uh, degree or, or just missed because there hasn't been an opportunity to develop that kind of sense within their younger workforce. And then the digitized performance management, pretty important, it, it provide, okay. providing that real time. So okay. I'm going to close that poll out and show you guys. Looks like we so, have. Go ahead. So yeah, coaching and mentoring. A lot of people are utilizing that tool. That's terrific. Um, Twenty-two percent not have haven't implemented anything as of yet. Uh, Sixteen percent uh, you're digi digitized. <laughs> I'm tripping over that one. Performance management, and then uh, seven percent other. Uh, and no one uh, taking advantage as of yet of the Shark Tank business simulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So I know we are bumping up at the top of the hour here, but I'm going to turn it over to you, Anissa, for questions and possible next steps. Um, and I'm happy to hang out to uh, answer some questions. Going to get to that slide. There we go. <laughs> yes, thank you, everyone, for being here today. We hope that you uh, were able to take something useful away. One of the things that Turnkey Coaching and Development Solutions does really well is provide organizational development consulting specifically customized to an organization's unique culture and tolerance for training and coaching and mentoring and all of those pieces. Um, we would like to offer everyone on the call a complimentary, no obligation consultation uh, that typically will result in some type of an actionable strategy. We do not charge for this even though our goal is to present something where you can take and implement whether you use us or not. We believe that's one way that we add value that most of our competitors do not is we know that you've got many options and if there's something that we do that uh, we can share a best practice or something that you can use, uh, again, whether you work with us or not is not as important because we know at some point you'll be able to come back and say, who was that company that provided us something that was really useful? Uh, and, and gained our trust in that way. And so anyone that is on the call that would like an opportunity to brainstorm about some of the challenges that you're facing, whether it be, can my mom call to talk to you about my performance <laughs> review? Uh, or, you know, how do we get our executives that are used to command and control leadership to understand the, the return on investment of a millennial workforce development strategy. I'm very open to sharing our best practices and I would encourage you to give us a call um, to discuss that. And in the meantime though, if there are, I know that we are wrapping it up and I want to say thank you so much to Annie. Um, if there are any additional questions, we will stay put and answer any of those that may come, come through. Um, and let me just open up my question box here just to see. There it is. There it is. Um, we've got uh, quite a few folks, Annie, saying thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. <laughs> excellent uh, use of their one hour. <laughs> oh, uh, fabulous. That's great to know. <laughs> Eric says this was very insightful, so thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. That is our aim, is to provide something that is meaningful and useful. Um, and Nancy wants to know if we can provide the PowerPoint. That's okay with me. Okay with you, Annie? Sure. Yes. It, this, this was recorded too, was it not? So, it was. so we, people will be getting the the um, link. Yes, that's what for we'll the be recording. Okay. We will be providing uh, the resources that you mentioned, links to those, as well as a recording of the webinar, as well as a PDF file of the PowerPoint. Super. All right, so I think that that is it. Doesn't look like we have any other questions. Thank you, everyone, okay. so much, Annie. It was an excellent um, uh, use of our time today, and just really want to acknowledge and appreciate you and your expertise. And thank you. 
Well, and thank you for being such a wonderful co-host. It was a pleasure to, to be here with you and, and with everyone. So thank you very much. Likewise. We appreciate your time, everyone. Do get in touch if we may be of service. Have a great day.